Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so anybody has questions? Or? I have a question about the ADA. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at Copaig as a station in the middle, and I'm going to ask a parking question. A what? So was a parking question. Okay. So I was channeling the park. Um, if somebody needs ADA um, accessibility, but doesn't generally park at Copaig, I'm sure right now that they have a horrible time getting anywhere. Are they going to be able to park? Are they going to have access to parking at Copaig if that's not a station that they generally travel to or from? I mean, traditionally, when we have if we have parking, you have to have a certain amount of AD spots. I think, right. I think that's irrespective of if it's accessible or not. I think we have to have a percentage, percentage of overall yeah. spots right. and all. Do you then, need a sticker to park AD? So will you be exempt from a permit or a sticker uh, right, in order to use? That I don't know. I think it's, I think whatever the normal rules apply, it may apply to those also, unless it's our, unless we control it, and then we just leave it open to any first come first serve. I, think I, would, I would think the right thing to do is just make any handicap spots exempt from permits, no matter what lot it's in. I mean, that's that's in his position. It's not their lots. Right. right. Yeah. So like, it's they can't do that. Try to get the towns to do that. Maybe like, they, like six years ago, we were doing. Right six years ago, <coughs> we were working out. We we're replacing the elevators at Great Neck. So then. There's a gentleman that you know, that has a wheelchair from Great Neck, so at Manhasset, the town controls that, so I, I got him a spot at Manhasset, but that's like an exception kind of thing. Right. So he was able to They gave there. him a permit even though he wasn't eligible. Yeah. Before, basically. So Copay, who, who manages Copay? Who manages Copay? Copay Transit. Copay Transit. Town of Babylon. So that used, to be at, that used to be unrestricted. I believe they just, I think they just added some restrictions there. Uh, talking about, we since we're on the subject of ADA and elevators, and I mentioned the priority list, I, I think it's important on the priority list that you go with uh, Willis Point. I mean, I, it's per, personally, I think it's a total embarrassment to the system that we have the greatest city in the world, and a handicapped person can't go to the tennis center, or the handicapped person can't go to, you know, to City Field. You know, I mean, it's 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 crazy. So I, I, I can't believe that they haven't done it earlier. So now that it's in the capital budget, I think that should be one of the first elevators they install. So we actually had the money there since the previous program. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ha we've had it. We've now, to stay calm. Because it, you know, it's, it's tied in now to this whole LaGuardia air train. Yeah. So it didn't make sense for us to spend that money and then have to tear everything up. So we've, our money's been sitting there waiting. As that project pro that project progresses, it's going to be integrated. So that's going to be our contribution to that, but it's going to be a whole new connection there. But how what's far away? Is yeah, what's that? the time? That, 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 you know. I'm going to say at least a few years still. I don't think it's going to be this coming year. So at least two years at least. So uh, meanwhile, it was fun just to go in already, or now. It was fun to like. <laughs> So meanwhile, the handicapped elevator sits on hold for another two, three years until they figure out what they're doing with. Which of course will have its own delays. And yeah. Yeah. No, I think once that moves forward, it's going to be extradited. That's a, that's a priority. That's a priority thing. So it's going to be extradited. So. Well, I guess all you really need is the design drawings. You don't need it to be built. You just need a design drawing so you know where to put your. No, we, we already right? had a design drawing to just to strictly put elevators. No, no, no. I meant oh. you need the design drawings for from this, them. Correct. This dream to Laguardia. Then. Correct. Uh, so you know where to put your head. elevator. Okay. Uh, it's actually, I think they're probably. I think if anything, I think, I think Port Authority may be the ones building it because it's, it's going to be kind of their station. So, in a sense, we're going to be giving them the money for the, to, for this to be done. Who's doing? So who's? So actually, as part of that, it's not just going to be the elevator. Also, there's there's uh, abandoned platforms there. There's going to be another platform there. It's going to be reactivated so then we can actually have one it'll be 15 minute service could be for LaGuardia and and on the branch and then also <coughs> say for games or events like we'll be able to like have a train sitting there to load passengers and stuff the, after a game or something because right now they have to keep moving right because it's, it's, it's blocking the main track so that's that's gonna be part of that too so is um park and ride for congestion pricing something that's being looked at into and not 
in there? the big picture. Yeah, it's a big parking lot over there. I don't, I, I'm not the, I'm not directly involved in that, so I don't know right. if that if that is or not. Does um, to me it makes sense? So people don't park and ride in my neighborhood, but you know it's you all have those <laughs> concerns, right? How would that get on somebody's radar? Is that through part that traffic mobility advisory working group? There's a separate working group. There's a separate committee, I think, just for LaGuardia Air Train between us, Port Authority, tra I think uh, Transit, and uh, I think Linda Katz is on, is on that committee. Okay. So we through her. Well, we have to do it quick. Right, right, <laughs> right. Let's see, we've got another month before we know the answer to that question. <laughs> what else in the um, capital plan? That's, those are the big things. Uh, there's, a, there's additional rolling stock, right? Uh, on the uh, electric yes. side, right? Additional. What was the, they call them the M9As? Or mm -hmm. Yes. Are they be slightly different from the M9s? Or? Yeah, it fixed the things that they should have implemented in the first place, probably. Actually, one idea I'll, throw, I'll let you guys know about it, which is you see how what happens every time, you know, every. When you do a when you get fleet every 20, 30 years, this this long drawn out process that gets delayed, and so we're we're trying to figure out like how to break that model. I mean that's the model. That's how it's done in the U.S. Uh, so we're we're exploring actually how to move away from that and almost get like like a business when you have vehicles and you like get new cars every year or something. So that instead of a huge purchase all at once. Correct. Like do a, a almost a continuous purchase. Right. So every year you get I don't know, whatever the number is. Uh, it involves, we would have to, what we're exploring is identifying property to almost entice somebody to come set up, uh, like we'll, the idea is we will set up like a, a compound where you can manufacture, assemble the, the cars, have like a test track to test the cars. We can use it properly to maintain cars. We can lease that space out to, you know, like, but. I mean, that's not gonna happen in this program, but maybe by the next program or something, we could be something in place to move away from that model. It's tricky in terms of how do we, you know, if we own the facility, because normally the, the manufacturer builds a facility, but then if we own it, do we lease it? And then are we able to then lease it to somebody else if somebody else gets a different contract? So it's like, how do you work out that? Right, like this Kawasaki has one in Yonkers. Yes. But they do a lot of their assembly in somewhere in the middle there. Right, and bring the trains here, the cars here. Interesting. So Hector, look, look, yes. Sorry, this is on a different topic. Um, with Eastside Access, theoretically coming on board at the end of this Apple program, is there anything? But can I just ask you another question sure. about the Rolling Stone? Yeah. Um, as part of the uh, asset management um, plan, isn't it, there would seem to me to be continuous need for um, replacement and repair for um, some of the equipment rather than okay all the all happens at the same time in 5 10 15 year chunks is that coming into play and in looking at um, the replacement cycles for the different for the different cars or is it looked at sort of more in a group is there you know is there is there that kind of I don't know if it's even able to have that level of, of review of the individual um, assets. I, mean, I think now we're just trying to get a handle of, like these are the different equipments we have, this is their life cycles. Right. When do they, like when do they end and then how can we, st like, like how do you start a new way? Right. And when do you start it? I think it's a... Well, I think that it, it's, it's blended with the maintenance of what's, through asset management, they're tracking the maintenance mm -hmm. needs and seeing which ones are failing ahead of schedule and which ones are lasting longer. And so I think they do a dual program until asset management is fully implemented. So do you work with transit asset management? With transit, no. No. Eventually, that's all gonna probably be yeah. integrated. They've got a pretty advanced program now, I think. Our, equipment, in our maintenance and equipment people have I think they're already almost there. They they keep they track everything. Okay. Our engineering side is is not so much. You know, all the track infrastructure is not. They're trying, they're trying to get that to that same level. 
hopefully there will be a marriage of best practices from across the agency is this in the new Kumbaya reorganization. So with Eastside Access coming on board, is there a parking expansion, like a, even a focus on accessing the stations for those stations where parking is already a problem? And is there any money for garages or anything? I mean, the only main money is we're doing it now as part of a part of third track. We're building two garages at Mineola and at Westbury. They're currently under construction. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's for it's really for the future demand that's part partly for that and in station redesign with accessibility or whatever are is there an effort to maximize whether it's the bike ped stuff the kiss and ride you know how the parking lots are being designed so that the flows in the parking lots i mean you're going to have you know a lot of added capacity you don't want it to be an echo chamber so thinking the ability to have a good experience in being able to park your car or access the station they would be. In a way, we're, we're moving away from just building standalone garages and fully mm -hmm. funding it. We're moving towards a model if there's, if there's some private development or a municipality that wants to partner. Like part Port Chester and exactly. on Metro North. Yeah, the Harrison, the Harrison. Harrison, area. well, yeah, that's a full land swap So like for example, thing, at Hicksfield, Port Chester has the a, supervisor that wants a new garage and we're like, we, 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 sh we, we can help them accomplish that model that, you know, it doesn't have to take our money. Like we can, you give us the property and we work on, on transit owning development. Mm -hmm. We can get the developer can add parking as part of his development, as part of his rezoning. Yeah. And it can be done at no, no cost to the taxpayer. Yeah, uh, Port Chester does, uh, did a uh, developer I, I was. I spoke to him on that. Hmm? I spoke to him on that. But the issue though is, again, it's going to be residents only. Yeah, it's So right. you're giving up land to with the riders and around won't be able to use right. it. Right. So that's the only concern when you do those projects is that people who live outside who may that may be the closest train station to them, but it's not their official town can't park there. So if you're but you're but the railroad is giving something to us. In this instance in Hicksville it would be they, they own they own most most of the parking lines there. If they gave us the property then we we can protect some commuter rights. But is there any? But that's what you just said. Yeah. You're making them some land for part of that project. You're, just, you're giving land to the come for all commuters are not getting the benefit of any of the property. Okay. I'm just saying these are issues that mm -hmm. when you say it's that you're giving something towards it with no tax taxpayer that's affecting other affecting riders. It, it's the same thing where, right? What you're saying is, well, we don't own it. But in the capital budget, there is room to put some money over into real estate to purchasing land near the train station. So the an ownership is there. So you're not investing in properties that you don't own and you don't have full control of, or or you're denying riders the ability. Well, to like use. in Westbury, we're building one in Westbury. The village owns a property, so we're gonna give them a percentage of village spots based on and then the rest of it is going to be open to everybody for example so they're going to be entitled to a certain amount because it was their property so right, but, but the state, rest of it will be yeah because state funding is going in so when yeah. state funding goes into it, it's required to have outside but if they're contributing towards a project then then we can negotiate a percentage for the local so is is there a parking program that's geared towards the added capacity east side access would have that would be valuable to to here, a presentation on it. I don't think what you mentioned, though you're talking about exists. Okay, thanks, Hector. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about moving towards value capture and. Did you go to one of those yeah, it's, just, it's in that same umbrella because no, no, seeing um, there, there are opportunities to um, purchase the land. And just the ones that get the elevators. Because you just do the want to get the elevators. access to be a success. Just the success. Yes. Uh -huh. There's a, in, in the, the program, it's about how many stations are going to be upgraded, not just ADA, they got condition of being upgraded, mm -hmm. right? Do we have a list of what those stations are? Yes. <coughs> uh, so different ones are getting different levels of investment, but uh, I mentioned Babylon, because that's going to get replaced the platforms there. 
This That's is spelled out in the plan, the stations. It's in what we've submitted that informs the plan, but I don't think it's itemized. It's not itemized in the plan, but this is what we know. Okay. Like the big numbers, this is that we know what what we're gonna, we plan on using it for. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it, it, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, it makes sense that you would know what you need. It would not make sense that it wouldn't be included in the plan. That sort of makes it squishy for, uh -huh. So. Like I would be reported at this point versus yeah. being right. official on the That's, plan. It's a good idea. So what, one reason why we haven't been so vocal with some of those things, so like say the elected officials in those areas, they kind of know what's which stations in the districts are getting have been committed to. But because things can change and so because again, if we don't get the same amount of funding then obviously then we can't go in and put us at use the promise. So what's the if you get the funding uh, Oh, so in Suffolk County it was Babylon Station. Um, there's actually work to be rehabbed with Rokakama garages included. We're going to be doing some work at uh, Huntington Station to improve the capacity there. Well, what work did that needs a lot of work? Excuse. Well, oh, I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned the last time, you know, we have, uh, there's a, it was mentioned at the, at the, at the committee meeting in the book. We awarded a contract for Port Jeff Branch modernization, a stack of study. It's not, it's looking at whether it's double tracking or electric or electrification or what or, or adding sidings you know what's needed to improve service in that branch long term you know we don't think there's going to be money for full electrification anytime soon but then what can be done shorter term what other things can be done some of it is going to be like ada improvements like at some stations or improve access or other things at huntington area we need some yard tracks or we need something else to improve the service there um, in Nassau County, uh, the Central Branch, the Merrick, oh, no, that's design. The Great Neck Station building and this, uh, the platforms that have to be uh, refurbished, Ball Park, elevators at Mineola. Did you say Ball Park? Huh? Floor, 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 and Limbrook Station Building and Long Beach Station Building. In Queens, it's okay. uh, with, uh, the, with the renovation of the station buildings, does that bring with it any extension of their hours that they're open or maintenance? Well, they're not going to make capital operations. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Act is talking capital. But actually at Long Beach, so like we have funding for Long Beach to re, to improve the canopies, some platform work, uh, the station building, all that. We just learned that the, the city is looking to, they have prop, they have property on, on either side of our station, mm -hmm. by City Hall and by the shopping center. So they're gonna be doing some redevelopment. So we wanna meet with them right. because maybe we can partner with them. So mm -hmm. to do something to connect, improve connectivity and make something better. So. Right. So is, is there an effort to have, um, as you're reworking the stations or anything, station vendor, you know, a vendor to come in um, to provide some services which can help station houses stay open for longer? Is there any effort like that underway to keep it in mind that could make even small vendors go, go in? And I mean, we've been losing so much of those small vendors because they don't just, they just don't make money don't on us. Donuts. Yeah. Well, Starbucks has been good well, on actually one that we uh, we got board approval this summer is in like Riverhead Station the, the station has been closed for a long time so that one uh, looks like the coffee shop kind of restaurant is going to be moving into there they're doing final negotiations so that's one that's going to be opening up and then uh, I'll see it first. one of the ones is, I think Woodmere is one another one that they're does, negotiating with a restaurant to move into the station. Does the LIRR do the upgrade to the building? Um, no, we have the vendor do it. Yeah, because that's something Metro North originally was do, having the vendor do it and then realized it was really hard to keep. Ellen, I'm sorry, can you speak louder? This is really oh. loud. Um, on Metro North, for a while they were having the vendors do it, but it, it's a heavy load for them to do, and they were finding they were getting more rotation out because the facilities weren't up to where they were so then they started incorporating thinking oh let's upgrade them to so that it's a standard that vendors can make better use of and not you know have the difficulties they were having just thinking it's another 
way to look at the capital invested. It's another way to look at the capital invested in the, in the station. The Kew Gardens, another, Kew Gardens one that we're trying to market that, that station building, even though it's open to normal hours, right. it, needs, it needs to spruce up, so we're trying to get a vendor there to move in and also do the improvements. Right. Right. Um, Which other ones? You said 20, how many? Oh, I didn't say a number. Oh, I'm sorry. I said 27 or 22. Or... I didn't say a number. Uh, is Central Ice Look in there? No, but there is. We are going to be doing um, Central Ice Slip and Deer Park. Now that you have a double track, people are used to one platform. The station building on one side, the vendors are on one side. Yeah. Now they have to go over. There's a pedestrian overpass over the crossing. People don't like to. Yeah. The kind of the overpass is not covered. So we're looking to do something with that. Do so, we're looking to improve that uh, without without triggering the ADA requirement of the whole elevator, make it a bigger thing then. So, so that's when I actually we're trying to do that before the new program. Uh, trying to do something there. Okay. And when you do that, do you upgrade the electricals and the water and other things? Because those were some of the things that vendors found, you know, they could use more of. And thinking just that level when you're doing a station can be useful mm -hmm. for thinking. Um, how much is left in the current capital program? And do you think you're gonna be able to spend it? Um, I think I think we I think no, no, there wasn't nearly as much as No, I, I think we pretty much used what was there. Okay. You know, there was some projects that didn't start and that money got used for others. So what we've had I think we've used. Whatever wasn't used, it's been reallocated to right. fund other other things. So. Uh, just curious, you didn't mention Hunter's Point because we discussed that earlier in the, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the conversation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going down the list. No, so I, I didn't hear happened. you say that. No, no. So I didn't finish. So in Queens, it was like Locust Manor for elevator, Forest Hills, which will require elevators, Hollis, Hunter's Point Avenue, Auburndale if re re replace the existing elevator. St. Albans would need a new elevator. Uh, I mean, Hollis is the whole platform, the whole thing has to be redone. Uh, Metzwillis Point, there's somebody there for Jamaica capacity. Uh, and then like between Jamaica and Brooklyn, it's like those Atlantic Avenue tunnels, there's, there's renewal work has to happen to those. Nostrum Avenue is New York. Well, Nostrum we're finishing now, the elevator should be done by the end of the year. East New York, I had seen it before. I don't see it here, but I know that's. But that's one that's going to require like a lot, a lot of money. So. Right. And the other thing, when a station is getting redone, do you have any? Are there plans to extend canopies so riders are more protected than oftentimes they are? What we're looking to do more of is actually extend platforms. Without canopies. Not necessarily with canopies. Okay. We're trying to get more doors open. So like in like Kew Garden and Forest Hill, we did those temporary extensions. So right. we want to make those uh, permanent. So like I, Yeah, okay. But there's a, are there any additional canopies being built on any? It doesn't matter because even the canopies they put up, they put up half. It fits ones. a few more people underneath. I mean, I just don't even know how people stand on it. They don't do it the whole way, even when they redo stations. Just don't, they don't just don't do it. We're moving away it's from just a fellow. Yeah, you're you're moving away, away from platforms? Hmm? I mean, canopies. from from canopies. No, no, but not full length. Not canopies. full length canopies. It's just, it. it's just. There's no reason I can I can figure out, but they don't do it. So people huddle under the canopy and then right. run to the train when it comes Like in. when it's raining it's and that. windy, yep. what do people do? Yeah, I tell you, they do run, you sit in your they, car they and bunch, run they to bunch the bunch up under the canopy that's building yeah, right. the new stations, and then they run to the train <laughs> in the rain and the wet platform to get to it to where they're gonna go. That that's.